all living things require nitrogen to grow and reproduce. Nitrogen is everywhere. 78% of the air we breathe is made up of this element. However, only a few living things can use the nitrogen in the air. Certain microorganisms in the soil can transform nitrogen from the air into a biologically active form. They use a portion of it themselves, the rest is available to plants. The plants grow. Animals eat the plants. Animal excrement, as well as dead animals and plants, are broken down by microorganisms. The nitrogen is once again available to plants. This is called the nitrogen cycle. Humans use this cycle for their needs. They farm and raise livestock. Each farm crop extracts nitrogen from the soil. In pre-industrial farming, humans compensated for the lost nitrogen with nitrogen-rich livestock manure, fallow fields and crop rotation. But nitrogen was still in short supply and crop yields were limited. At the beginning of the 20th century, chemists Fritz Habel and Karl Bosch developed an industrial process for producing bioavailable nitrogen. This was the birth of chemical fertilizers. From then on, it was possible to tap the inexhaustible supply of nitrogen in the atmosphere on a large scale. Chemical fertilizer drastically increased crop yields in the fields. The world's growing population was now better able to feed itself. As the standard of living rose, so did the demand for meat. Intensive farming led to more livestock. Before long, it was necessary to import feed to meet livestock needs. The nitrogen cycle exploded. And another source of nitrogen emerged. Since the Industrial Revolution, huge quantities of nitrogen compounds have been released into the atmosphere from burning wood, coal, gas and oil bioavailable nitrogen has become increasingly present in the environment. It went from essential ingredient for life to pollutant. Harmful nitrogen compounds caused by combustion enter the air and cause health problems. Sooner or later they end up in the soil of ecosystems. Livestock farming produces huge quantities of liquid manure. Much of the nitrogen enters the atmosphere from stalls, but also from storing and spreading manure. It ends up in large expanses of soil, including in near-natural habitats. The resulting over-fertilization triggers a negative development. The very few plant species that can effectively use nitrogen begin to dominate. The diversity of species declines in meadows and pastures, in the forest, trees become more vulnerable to storms, frost, harmful insects and drought. The system also leaks into the soil. Nitrogen that cannot be absorbed by farm crops ends up in the groundwater, streams and rivers where it is unwanted. Human excrement also enters the rivers and eventually reaches the sea, where it over-fertilizes the ecosystem and damages it. Some of the biologically active nitrogen escapes the soil and the sea in the form of nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide is not only a very powerful greenhouse gas that warms the climate, it also attacks the ozone layer, which protects us from the sun's UV rays. Global emissions of bioavailable nitrogen compounds in the environment have increased tenfold in the last 150 years. The excessive quantities of nitrogen threaten our health, biodiversity, the water, the climate and the ozone layer. This is a known problem. For that reason, 
The Federal Office for the Environment, the FOEN, is working to improve the nitrogen cycle. The goal is to prevent harmful nitrogen emissions and losses without reducing food production. Innovative technologies are the primary focus. The ever stricter regulations for motor vehicles, heating systems and industrial facilities are proving effective. Because exhaust emission limits are continuously being tightened, nitrogen emissions should decrease even more. Thanks to technological advances and measures, wastewater treatment plants can further reduce nitrogen quantities in rivers and seas. Agriculture is the main source of nitrogen pollution. Therefore, it is the sector where the most action is required. The best available technologies can be used to greatly reduce the quantities of nitrogen that result from stabling and feeding animals and storing and spreading liquid manure. To protect our drinking water resources, we must reduce the risk of nitrogen being leached from agricultural land. Measures have been identified. If we use them, they will benefit biodiversity, the forest, the sea, the climate, the ozone layer, and above all, our health.